Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Pitti Engineering's Q4 FY24 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions at the end of today's presentation. Please note that this conference will be recorded. Joining us today on this call is Mr. Akshay S. Pitti, Vice Chairman and Managing Director. Before we begin, I would like to mention that some of the statements made in today's call may be forward-looking in nature and may involve risk and uncertainties. For a list of such considerations, please refer to the earnings presentation. I would now like to hand the call over to Mr. Akshay Pitti. Over to you, sir. Good evening and a warm welcome to you all for the Q4 and full year FY24 earnings call. Before we open the floor for the Q&A session, I will briefly touch upon the highlights of the year gone by. Our ongoing CapEx and Aurangabad facility is on target. We enhanced capacity of 72 metric thousand tons per annum there in the commission by September 2024. We have concluded the previously announced acquisition of Bakaria Chetra Industries Private Limited on 6th of May 2024. With this, we have now gained access to both the facility in the strategically important South Indian market and an end user industry which we previously did not serve. The scheme of amalgamation with Pitti Casting and Pitti Rail was duly approved by the NCLT convened meeting of equity shareholders and unsecured creditors of the respective companies. A joint petition has been filed with NCLT Hyderabad bench and the same is reserved for hearing on 7th of June 2024. The board has approved fundraising of funds not exceeding Rs. 360 crores to issuance of eligible securities in one or more tranches subject to approval of members at the forthcoming EGM. I am happy to inform you that we have received the addendum to our incentives for investments in the Aurangabad facility. Consequently, we have accounted an incentive amount of 30.45 crores in quarter 4 FY24. On the sales volume for quarter 4, we have uh, achieved 11,435 metric tons as compared to 9,591 metric tons in quarter 4 FY23, higher by 19.22% on a YOY basis. Total revenue for Q4 FY24 was 359.32 crores, up by 36.5%. Ebitda for the quarter was 48.64 crores, compared to 40.56 crores in the previous year, registering a growth of 19.9%. Back for the quarter stood at 40.36 crores, higher by 62.5%. For the full year, the sales volume of 42,305 tons when compared to 36,297 metric tons in SY23, up by 16.9%. Revenue for the full year stood at 1,149.81 crores as compared to 1,117 crores in SY23 up by 11.79%. Net profit grew for the full year by 53.3% to 90.20 crores. The net debt for the year stood at 428 crores. The order book and schedule stands at about 800 crores. We have also provided an investor presentation along with a detailed performance report for your personal. I would mind like to open the floor for the Q&A session. <coughs> Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to please use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Bala Subramanian from Aryan Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, sir. Congratulations for a good set of numbers. Uh, my first question is regarding this uh, Bacardia Chaitra Industries acquisitions. And uh, so, like, uh, when we can expect uh, uh, around 300 crore uh, uh, top line uh, uh, in this acquisition company? And uh, uh, we earlier mentioned around 10% kind of margins, like. Uh, I just want to understand what's the rationale for the uh, 
these acquisitions and further why uh, those company promoters uh, uh, sold the companies and specific reasons for that it's a matter of I can't comment on why the promoters uh, sold that company. That is something that they can answer. As far as uh, uh, the expectations in the company going forward, in terms of tonnage, that company uh, has achieved about 14,000 tons of steel for FY24. Uh, for FY25, uh, we are targeting about 16,000 tons of steel in the subsidiary company. In terms of uh, margin, uh, we expect uh, the margins there to improve on uh, better utilization of raw material between the two companies, the parent company and WS. I have explained this in detail in the previous conference call on the rationale of the merger. So I think you can you know, refer to the notes from that call, uh, which can answer the remaining uh, queries on this particular comment. Okay, got it. Uh, sir, we have seen our uh, clients like uh, ABB, Siemens, so they have uh, uh, posted good set of numbers in this quarter. So what kind of opportunities and what kind of order inflows we are missing in current kind of time? Uh, broadly, we are seeing uh, good uh, growth across all the end user segments. Obviously, railways is continuing to outperform all the other segments, both domestically and internationally. But uh, I would say renewables also is performing very well. So all the other segments that we track are performing very well. Okay, sir. So on the export side, uh, our, so our contribution is around uh, 35% to 40% that range. So what kind of opportunities we have? One of our uh, uh, like, uh, uh, key uh, clients also expanding into metro side uh, for a, a new plant to cater international market. I just want to understand uh, uh, every place is talking about uh, uh, metro opportunities on the export side. So, like, what's your view on that uh, on the export side? What kind of opportunities do we have, uh, especially on the railway side? Exports overall is uh, continuing to remain strong despite uh, uh, headwinds in the end markets such as Europe and US. Our exports remain uh, strong. In addition to that, our indirect exports, the products that we supply to these entities in India, and then they export it to their uh, parent uh, markets, also is uh, remaining robust. I've uh, got it. Sir. So this fundraising of 360 crore, uh, like, uh, for, like uh, what's, uh, what kind of utilizations uh, we are going to use those funds? Like we already mentioned that uh, the peak tax debt is expected around the core 50 crore. Whether uh, this fund will be utilized for uh, debt repayment or uh, other growth opportunities? The uh, funds are targeted to be raised uh, for a, uh, multiple purposes, including uh, further opportunities, organic and inorganic growth, as well as uh, reduction of debt. Okay, so I'll come back in queue. I'm sorry, I can't understand what you're saying. Disturbance in the background. Uh, sir, I'll come back in queue for further questions. The next question is from the line of Pratamesh Dhaki from Motila Loswal. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, actually, sir, I'm audible. Yes, you're audible. Hi. Uh, so, wanted to check upon uh, two brief things. Firstly, uh, details are on order book of 800 crores. So, adjusted for price, how much has it grown or reduced? What are the execution timelines? Can you also give us some color on split by sector, split by geography, how much of it is domestic and how much of it is exports? Um, the exact numbers, I think we can uh, get you uh, if you send the request in writing. Uh, pending that, at the top of my hat, I think about 25 to 30% of the order book is export uh, side. The remaining is on the domestic. In terms of execution timelines, uh, this would be about 200 crores, which is more than one year uh, forward, and remaining is executable within the year. Uh, okay, and step by sectors, if uh, you could give us a brief idea. See, we track a lot of sectors, so to give that uh, on the top of my hand, I don't think I can do that right now. Uh, okay, okay, understood. Uh, my next question is around incentives, right? So uh, what I've generally seen is uh, we account the incentives for a year as incentive receivables in our balance sheet and realize it in the next quarter of the next financial year. But this time, it looks like we have uh, accounted it in our PNL in the uh, last quarter itself. It has something changed or was it sanctioned earlier this time? 
No, if you recall, uh, we have already accounted one chance of incentives in setting the correctly August. Yeah. August. August. So, uh, this time, uh, we have got a second addendum. So, if you go back to our original Aurangabad incentive, we are invested okay. in 180 crores. The first okay. eligibility certificate which we had received was for 103 crores. That okay, amount perfect. was eligible over 7 years, which was okay. about the 14 crores per year that we normally book. Then okay. there was an expansion in Hungabad facility which was to the team of another 65 crores worth of incentives. For this, the addendum was pending to be received from the government of Maharashtra uh, last financial year itself due to uh, certain other reasons in Maharashtra that did not come in. Now we have received okay. the addendum and therefore spoke the incentive amount for two years, uh, FY23 and FY24, for the enhanced value of the incentive. Which is basically okay. under 65 crores, which will be accounted uh, within the next four years. Okay. Which two years we have accounted in quarter four. Understood. So, uh, if I were to see, there is another 220 crores, which will be, uh, which is, you could say, will be expensed or amortized over the next seven years, until FY23, FY23 as incentive. Just one second. Uh, so, see, uh, just to give you a break up on this, for the next two years, we'll account roughly about 30 crores per year. With this, okay. the original incentive claim would be finished. The current okay. ongoing expansion, including okay. uh, what we are planning over the next uh, two years also, will be okay. part uh, eligible for the incentive scheme. This amount is okay. expected to be somewhere between 300 to 350 crores based on actual uh, spend in the facility. Okay. That amount would be uh, uh, realized over nine years, starting uh, starting FY, from uh, 27. 27, nine years till FY 35-36. Yes, it will be on the okay. actual investment rate till FY 27, mm -hmm. divided by nine years, starting FY okay. 27. Roughly 27 to 30 crores. Uh, I mean. Uh, from FI 25 till FI 35, we can expect average 30 years, 30 crores of incentive per annum, right? Yes, I think that would be uh, correct. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, okay, understood. My uh, next question was, let's say uh, if we were to look at Pitti uh, uh, on a standalone basis, there is a plain machining revenue and there is uh, a motor assembly revenue. Uh, can you give us a broad split? As to how much is just plain uh, machine vanilla uh, revenue and uh, motor assembly revenue, how much uh, it is? So, uh, if you take plain vanilla machine revenue, which have uh, not, which are basically of components which are not going into any other motor comp assembly, that should be yeah. in the about 90 crores. 90 crores, agreed. And uh, uh, how do you see the split going forward? I mean, we from the uh, I investor presentation, we are aware how much metric tons has been sold. But then, how do we see uh, the since we are adding machine capacity? How do we see the uh, plain machina, uh, machining component uh, increasing in the next three four years versus the uh, motor comp uh, motor business going ahead? We are working internally to uh, take out a proper metric through which uh, all of you can track this, and I hope to have that by the end of this quarter. Uh, okay, uh, and how, how much gross margins do we enjoy there in just plain machining uh, business? Plain machining business, the gross margins would be somewhere around 45 to 50 percent. Okay, so uh, our fifty casting business is something which will uh, aid the 45 percent gross margin business. Is it fair to assume that? Yes, that's fair to assume that. Uh, okay, I'll join in queue for the for the set of questions. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nesar Parekh from Native Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Hi. Uh, am I audible? Uh, yes, we're audible. Yes, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, so first question is on the uh, order book. Uh, you know, if we look at last year, uh, March 23, I think you were around 825 crores. Uh, now we are around 800 crores. So what is the reason we are not seeing growth there and uh, you know, how do you see uh, FY25 if you just keep the merger and the acquisition aside, but just on a standalone organic basis, how should we think of FY25? The FY25, which I would prefer to you know, give you a volume uh, uh, projection what they're looking at. 
in terms of scale, we did 42,000 tons in the last financial year. For the current financial year, on a standalone basis, we are looking at about 48,000 tons of steel. And at the WS level, we are looking at about 16,000 tons of steel. Okay. Uh, so, okay, so it's 48 plus 16 is what you are looking at. And, uh, you know, at the, uh, the, the acquisitions you've done, uh, the 16,000 tons, the EBITDA per ton over there, you know, after the material benefit that you will get and all the product changes that you do, what should we expect as the EBITDA per ton over there on the 16,000 tons? See, the uh, benefits of the integration will go over the next 12 to 18 months. Uh, at the peak, uh, at the end of that entire process, the EBITDA over there should be in the vicinity of 18,000 rupees a ton. Okay, so that will be 18, and for our 48,000, uh, should we assume we'll maintain this 42,000 ton that we're showing this quarter? Is that is that a fair assumption? This would be going uh, higher. It should be in the vicinity of 45,000 for the full year. Okay, understood. Uh, and uh, just standalone basis. Understood, understood. Uh, and just the merger of the uh, 50 casting also happening, so that will also aid the ability number. Okay, so that 42 to 45 will partly be because of pitty castings also. No, 45,000 is on a standalone basis without the benefits accruing from the merchant. Okay, okay. Understood, understood. Got it. And the order book, just one thing, uh, can you give uh, the, the volume in, in volume terms this year and last year? What is the growth in volume terms? Just one second. I don't have a full firm number with me, but it should be in the vicinity of about 40,000 tons at, uh, at the end of the last financial year. And uh, this year? I'm thinking for FY24 end. Okay, okay, understood. Uh, and just last thing, uh, the railways, like you said, is obviously, you know, grown significantly. Uh, is it uh, still all exports? Is there some domestic component? And how should we think? of this railway uh, thing, uh, you know, uh, how's the traction uh, over here in, in that particular segment for you? So, uh, on the railway side, the Indian business is still uh, maturing for us. Uh, if you see 40% of revenues on the railway side, classes to roughly about uh, 500 flows of top line coming from railway business for the full year. Out of this 500 flows of top line, roughly about 125 flows is the contribution from the domestic segment. The remaining is uh, entirely export uh, based. We see the export side remaining uh, flattish over the next couple of years, while the domestic should grow more than uh, 100 percent within the next one and a half year. Okay, and we do we have like uh, confirmed orders or some or is that something that we think, or we are still at the PO tendering stage in the domestic side? So on the Indian side of the railway business, we are basically on two sides. One which we supply to the OE, such as uh, Raptic, Alstom, Bombardier, Medha. So that business is not tender-based. We have to develop the products and they have to uh, kind of uh, pull out those products in the field with the Indian railway. And then they have the city contracts. So that business is, I think, uh, uh, almost fully developed and will start uh, contributing to revenue from this financial year. As far as the direct supplies to Indian railways is considered, we have to go through certain field trials. We should be completed by uh, October and we should start bidding on tenders from October onwards for commercial supplies. And the EBITDA per ton, would it be similar or should we, I mean, there could be some, when we work with Indian railways and the L1 and all that, should, will there be some kind of a compression there? See, uh, on the lamination side, uh, EBITDA per ton would be similar. On the machine components, uh, what we supply directly to Indian railways would be slightly lower in margins than compared to OEM. Understood. Okay, correct. That's very helpful. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sanjit Narang from Narang Family Office. Please go ahead. I am audible. Yes, sir. Please Hello. Go ahead. Am I audible? Yes, you are, sir. Please go ahead. Yes. Uh, congrats on the good set of numbers, sir. Uh, sir, my uh, first question is regarding EBITDA per ton. 
if we uh, see it from your presentation, the EBITDA per ton is flattish instead of uh, we doing a more uh, more percentage of machining. That is uh, always margin accretive. So why is that? You know, uh, lamination tonnage also has gone up. So it's not just that you've done more machining, there's more uh, tonnage as well. Okay. So you uh, can't uh, just uh, take a one-to-one correlation on that can. Okay, and uh, moreover, uh, what I wanted to know that uh, we being in a converter business, uh, then the electric steel has uh, raw material prices have gone down, but our data as a percentage should have gone up, but it has gone down to 14%. Why is that? Uh, you mean for the quarter four or for the full year? Uh, for the quarter four. Yeah, so in quarter four, uh, we have certain uh, raw material uh, transactions uh, with regards to the Dalia Chetra. Because of that, uh, we have higher sales, which will not be there going forward once it's become a WOS. We have supplying raw material to the uh, WOS, okay. which became a That's WOS with effect um, six means. So for the last quarter, we had actually sold some raw material to them, which comes in revenue. Okay. And secondly, uh, we have also accounted for other income, which is the incentive income, which is not added to uh, the data. But increases your okay. top line by about 10%. Okay. And uh, sir, uh, what what is the rationale behind raising uh, funds as we have uh, picked our debt as well uh, to the limit that you told in previous calls? So we yeah, have uh, still planning uh, more uh, growth in uh, some of our strategic uh, sectors, and we see that you know having that capital returns will help us going forward. Okay, so we can expect a capacity expansion plan going forward as well from here as well. What we have told uh, for the past two years. Yes. Thanks a lot, sir. That's it. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sanjeev Z from Dream Ladder. Please go ahead. Hello. 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 You are audible, sir. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, sir. Uh, thanks for taking the question. Uh, I wanted to get an idea about uh, the size of the uh, components business uh, by FY27. So, uh, firstly, if I just take the component business, there are certain components that we make which go into the motor and generator side of the business. Then there are certain components that we make which have nothing to do with the motor and generator side of the business. If I combine both of these, today this is about a 270 crore uh, business for us. These standalone machine components which are not going into any motor or generator assemblies is about 90 crores top line. This combined business, we see uh, at least about five to 700 crores over the next uh, four, three to four years, two to three years, three to four years. Okay. Okay, sir. That's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kushbu Gandhi from Share India Securities. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. So my first question is on Bagadia Chaitra. So uh, we did the acquisition and from this quarter onwards, uh, uh, their revenue will be merged with our uh, financial side. Yes. Yeah. So can you just give me an idea what was their uh, revenue in FI24 and uh, what was their EBITDA per ton or uh, what was their margins over there? Their uh, revenue was about 250 crores. Their EBITDA was... Abirita was about 14.5 crores, and Abirita per ton was about 10,500 uh, rupees. So, uh, so, for the next year for FI25, uh, where do we see uh, an improve? How do we see the improvement in Abirita per ton uh, in next Bagadia? I know you have given a guidance that overall on a consolidated basis will be improving to 15%. But uh, uh, if I see on a uh, standalone as a Bagadia. How much improvement can we see in FI25? 
see on uh, Bavaria side, uh, one on the volume side, we should be going to the 16,000 tons in the current financial year. And on Eberita, it's a 2018 one journey, at the end of which we'll be having about 18,000 Eberita per ton with that entity. Okay, so in FI26, we'll be seeing uh, an improvement initially, right? The improvement will start from uh, quarter two onwards. And over the next uh, 18 months, we should be going to about 18,000 EBITDA per ton in that entity. Okay. And uh, so when you give us a guidance of uh, of the sales of 48,000 plus 16,000 uh, on a consolidated, so from the 16,000, uh, if you can lead that uh, majorly that would be coming from Bharia. Any uh, any extra components which will be uh, getting through pity casting, the Pitsi casting merger, uh, as you know, is pending. Uh, we will not get any lamination business on Pitsi casting. It's basically, we will get a uh, uh, casting business for which we can do machining going forward. Okay. Uh, so, uh, when do we expect, uh, 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 are we expecting this uh, merger to be done at least in the first half from, uh, from whatever date till now which we have received? We have received the uh, requisite approvals from shareholders and uh, creditors, and the uh, case is pending in front of NCLT, and the hearing is due on 7th of uh, June. On a timeline, I can't give you anything beyond that. Okay. okay. Yes, thank you. So that's it from my side. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bala Subramanian from Aryan Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you so much, sir. Sir, in the automotive segments, uh, uh, earlier we are uh, like a uh, plan to enter into IC part of the business with uh, generator related products. And uh, we also uh, like uh, supplying to two wheeler uh, uh, on the EV side. And uh, I just want to understand right now EV is picking up. Uh, so, what kind of uh, uh, like uh, uh, order inflows or any uh, thought process on in future uh, in those uh, segments? Uh, on the EV motor side, uh, even today, most of the motors are still imported from China. Uh, hardly any motors are being manufactured in India. So, as and when the localization of the component takes place, definitely we'll be looking at that as an opportunity. Okay, sir. So, in the non automotive segments, uh, earlier we guided around 500 crores of top line by FI27. And uh, like, still we are maintaining that or any further improvement expected? Sorry, I didn't understand the question. From the non-automotive segments, earlier we guided on 500 crores of top line in, in this business. In this business. And, 27. and uh, any further improvement is expected uh, uh, like what's the thought process on next uh, four to five years time frame. You mean the machine component side of the business? Yes, sir. Uh, so on the machine component side of the business, we still maintain that we should look at five to seven hundred crores of top line from that business. Okay, sir. So, uh, 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 like uh, right now, we have some extra land uh, for this uh, uh, ma this new appreciation company. So, any further uh, like a capex expected uh, 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 or any maintenance capex expected in next two to three years time frame? Um, yeah, acquired company. We don't have any extra land. The the, the, the facility in Bangalore or Bazaria Chaitra is to be saturated. We will be looking at uh, expansion there, maybe in FY26. Okay, sir. Okay. Also, like if you could uh, share on the uh, client's next side, like uh, how much revenue is coming from ABB uh, and the uh, coming uh, top uh, five clients mix or top ten clients mix. In this financial year, Q4 and in this financial. Okay. Top, top five clients will be about 60% of revenue. I can't give you the uh, second order, but the top five clients would consist of Vastek, Indian Railways, uh, Siemens, among others. Okay, sir. Got it, sir. So, in this, uh, after this 72,000 tons per annum, any further plans we have, or uh, we have mentioned around more than 5 lakh tons of uh, capacities available in the industry. And uh, right now, the overall railways and the entire uh, uh, capex is going on in capital goods sector. So, any further uh, like uh, growth plans we have? Yeah, 
see uh, this capacity that we are expanding will be commissioned by September and should be good for us over the next two years. We will be looking at expanding for business that we foresee uh, in FY27. Got it, sir. Uh, sir, like on that, uh, if I'm looking at volume side, uh, like uh, the value added uh, uh, component side uh, have seen good growth on the volume side. And uh, however, uh, the loose laminations are in single digit year on year basis. Uh, however, in assembled and value added 24% growth. So we can expect uh, uh, that same kind of double digit growth uh, in value added component side. Uh, with the acquisition of Bagadia Setra, we should be uh, seeing actually on a consolidated basis more on loose uh, going forward as well. Got it, sir. Got it. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pratamesh Dake from Motila Loswal. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, I'm Audible. Uh, yes, you're audible, sir. Please proceed. Yeah. So my first question is, I guess in fourth quarter of FY24, our volume contribution from value-added products moved to 79% when compared to 75% in Q4 of FY23, which I guess must have resulted into 3% improvement in gross margins. But on an annual basis, the contribution from value-added products has increased from 75% to 76% in FY24, but still the gross margin improved by 4%. What is the reason behind this? I mean, is it something like high, the products which are way higher in realization are not being captured in terms of vi volume terms? Or uh, is it due to economies of scale of RM? What is the reason behind the same? See, yeah, I think it's the uh, volume itself, it's assembled and value added. So anything mm -hmm. which is not in loose condition is typically included into assembled and value added. So mm -hmm. not all SMBs are alike in terms of uh, a percentage of value added onto the product. So this is okay. because uh, the percentage of, if I may use a word, lower value added SMBs, these are the higher value added SMBs, or higher in the ratio towards the lower value added SMBs. Okay. Uh, it answers the question. Then there could be levels in the value added segment as well. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Okay. Okay. And uh, you also mentioned that uh, machining component part would be 500 crores worth of business. So is it fair to assume, it, assume that it will be uh, achievable by FI27 end? Yes. Uh, okay. And uh, if we were to look at the split of that 500 crores, how much of it would be motor related and non-motor related? Um, yeah, I think it would be about uh, two-thirds um, uh, non-motor and uh, three-thirds, uh, sorry, two-thirds uh, non-motor and uh, three-thirds of uh, it would be uh, motor-oriented. Uh, so, uh, sorry, I, I was not able to hear. Could you please repeat? 200 crores would be non-motor and 300 crores okay. would be uh, motor-oriented. Uh, okay, so if you just look at today's uh, numbers, out of 270 crores, about uh, mm -hmm. 90 crores is non-motor and about uh, 180 crores is motor-oriented. The 90 crore non-motor oriented will grow to about 200 crores in the next two years. And the 180 yeah. crores of uh, revenue which is uh, coming from motor side and generator side of uh, the uh, business will uh, grow to about 300 crores. By FI27 end, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, our plans around debt repayment, uh, do they change post the uh, fundraise? Or uh, how, are the, how are your plans around it? I mean, currently we have uh, 500 odd crores of total debt and talking of total debt what are your plans about uh, how how do you want to see the debt position as of fi27 end see uh, from now to fi27 end there's a lot of time and it all depends on what kind of uh, inorganic and organic growth opportunities we see going forward uh, the net debt picture would be dependent on uh, a lot to do with that the fundraise is just one part of it Okay. Uh, okay, but then uh, I guess in one of our previous con calls, you had mentioned going the ambition of net debt zero uh, by the next two years. So the, the plans around the, that execution still remain the same? See, uh, if, unless and until we see something uh, dramatically uh, uh, changing, we are committed towards that plan. Okay. Oh, understood. My, uh, I had a couple of small uh, housekeeping. Uh, a great opportunity on growth, uh, whether organic or inorganic, uh, we will obviously prioritize that over the previous target of being net debt free. 
Mm, okay, understood. I had uh, one last uh, uh, housekeeping question. So, uh, in our current balance sheet, what is 64 crore of other non-current assets and 116 crore of other current assets sitting on our books? There will be the capital advances for the ongoing capex. Okay, and 116 crores? The 116 crores will be the capital advances. Okay, and uh, 64 crores are other non-current assets. Uh, that we have seen. So the tools, guys, and uh, uh, fixtures, which are depreciated. Okay. Okay. Investor okay. incentives uh, that we are supposed to receive from the government. Oh, uh, and okay. And how much? Uh, how much would those be in those 64 crores uh, receivables, incentive receivables? Uh, out of 115 crores of uh, uh, one second. I'm going back to the first question, answer of yours. On this floor. The other uh, current asset is about 115 crores, of which uh, yeah. 15 crores is industrial uh, incentives yet to be received from the government. 48 okay. crores accounted last financial year. So, uh, most of it is not received till now. It will be received by uh, somewhere around November or December, as per the pattern. Okay. And the remaining are uh, basically your uh, uh, GST and other those kind of things, the other non-current assets. Oh, six, uh, 64 crore breakup, right? Uh, you have, uh, what, is, what would that be? Yeah, yeah, and, huh. and uh, what about the 64 crore of other non current assets? One second. That would be 62 crore of the capital advances. Ha, okay. So meaning our deposits with government bodies and electricity, etc. Okay, so maybe once the CAPEX is done, that will also come down, right? Yes, that is something on the CAPEX will turn. So, whole of CAPEX, 72,000 of metric tons of lamid, uh, sheet metal and the machining arts will be done by September. Can you assume? Uh, the uh, sheet metal side will be completed by September. The machine arts will still take a little bit of time to commission. Uh, what, uh, I mean, by H1, how much, how much, how, how many machine, machining arts can we expect? Total? By H1 end, about 600,000 machine arts will be commissioned. Okay, and the rest by uh, uh, next H1, uh, H2. Yeah, next by December itself. Oh, December itself. Wonderful. Uh, that's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Karan Kamdar from DR Choksi, Finserv Private Limited. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Uh, great, uh, great. It's a great set of numbers. So, from the previous question, I think I got a part of my answer. So what I was looking at is the change in working capital, which is a hit of 134 crores in the cash flow. So I think a bigger amount of it comes from the other current assets and the other non-current assets. Would that be correct? No, it's not just that. Uh, the uh, big change in working capital also comes from the fact that the country credit, as you see, year over year, have uh, mm -hmm. reduced dramatically. Uh, right. This is because we are changing actually our procurement strategy Earlier, uh, the procurement used to happen mm. uh, from uh, vendors who the contract used to be on a calendar basis, not the financial year basis. Okay. So now we are trying to align our purchase contracts with the financial year. So as a result, in quarter one, we procured a lot of material out of contract period. And now we are going into the uh, regular contract wherein we'll have those hungry creditors financing the material, not on cash basis, basically. Hello? Hello? Mr. Kamdar, are you on the, can you hear us? So the current participant seems to have dropped from the queue. We will proceed to the next question, which is from the line of Pratik from CCIL. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, good set of numbers. First of all, congratulations to you. So my question is actually, you know, uh, as we are expecting that, you know, the revenue will start uh, coming from September, uh, September onwards uh, for the capex, and uh, we are raising 350 crores for the uh, some growth purpose for organic or inorganic, inorganic growth. So by FY27 or mid FY28, what could be the max top line that we could expect? In terms of tonnage, I can guide you better than top line because the revenue is subject to property price changes. 
Uh, we are targeting including the WOS about uh, 80,000 uh, tons of steel, the SY27. Okay. 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 Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Nesar Parikh from Native Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thanks for the follow-up. I just want to continue. Uh, sorry to interrupt, sir, but you are not audible. Yeah, hello. Sorry, is this clear? Yes, sir. No, sir. You still sound distant with the next Yeah, one. sorry. Is this better? Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, no, I was just continuing the question asked previously. So, uh, on the working capital, uh, can you please feed back to, uh, what you were saying? Yeah. So, see, uh, we have an annual contract uh, which was based on a calendar year with our vendors. This will be a financial year. Basically, Jan to December instead of March to April. So April to March. So in the last quarter, we did a lot of purchases outside of contract to allow us to realign these contracts to a financial year basis. So a lot of these procurements were done on cash and on spot purchase basis. Therefore, our uh, uh, summary credit cards have reduced when compared to the year ago basis, while our inventories have increased to provide for this change in working capital structure, for the procurement structure. Going forward, this will completely change once again. We'll go back to the old system wherein we have, uh, you know, credit card days payable, which is in the vicinity of about 100 credit card days. Right, right, right. Okay, so this is just a one-off, right? This is just a one-off. This is actually realigning the structure so that we can get efficiency on the balance sheet going forward. Got it, got it. Okay, and uh, just uh, uh, one more question was on the machine parts uh, business uh, that you, uh, uh, you know, what was the margin that we make on that business in this year? What was the margin we made? And as we scale up that to 500, is there scope where we can do high value add and kind of get better margins? You know, the machine components, uh, our gross margins are in the vicinity about 40, 45 percent. And uh, that margin is actually much higher than the overall company's average margin if you see. Going forward, the component that we are targeting will be in the similar margin profile. Okay, got it. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhijit from Pi Asset Management. Please go ahead. Abhijit, the line for you has been unmuted. You may proceed with your question. As there is no response from the current participant, we will move on to the next question, which will be from the line of Akash Singhania from Art Ventures. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, hi, Akshay. Congratulations on good numbers. My question is on EBITDA per ton, uh, which is around, you know, for the last six quarters, if I see, it has remained constant at around 42,500. So uh, normally, you know, I was expecting some increase. So can you give us some color why it has remained stagnant for the last six quarters? See, nothing uh, much has changed in the business model in the last six quarters. Uh, what's going to change in the next couple of quarters will actually give you the increase, which is the machine component business increasing significantly. The um, uh, the, the, the <coughs> acquisition of the uh, entity in Bangalore, which will help us in better material utilization and uh, better economies of scale going forward. So all those uh, positives are yet to accrue. And as they accrue, the margins will improve. Okay. And as you mentioned, uh, around 45,000 per ton for FI25. Uh, so, and if going forward for the next two, three years, uh, should we see a steady increase from 45,000 to? See, uh, uh, on a standalone basis, we should be at about 45,000 per ton in this year. Uh, this is without considering the WOS and without considering the amalgamating company. The uh, consolidation of the WOS will actually pull this number down. Okay. As we are at a much lower mar EBITDA per ton margin. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so, so on a standalone basis, again, going 20, forward, if you see, yes. uh, for 45, we should be moving to the vicinity of 48 over the next two years after that, as further economies of scale and uh, better uh, operating leverage kicks in. Okay. Okay. Thank you, and uh, best wishes. Congratulations once again. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Karan Kamdar from DR Choksi Finser Private Limited. Please go ahead. Karan Kamdar, the line for you has been unmuted. You may proceed with your question. Hello. Can you hear me now? 
Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hi, I got dropped earlier. So I just wanted a little more clarity on the working capital part uh, where you were saying that you are realigning the uh, financial year and the calendar year. So I wanted to understand how that would benefit us and what what kind of uh, benefits would accrue to us by doing this change. So if you see, typically our uh, purchase contracts are calendar year based and uh, now we are moving them to financial year. This will help us better align our procurement to our financials. To do this switch, we have to do a lot of purchases in quarter one on a uh, cash and carry basis with the uh, contracted structure in which we have credit available. Therefore, in quarter one, the Sanji creditors have gone down dramatically when compared to the average history of uh, average credit days in the history of the company. This will not be uh, going uh, continuing going forward. Now that we have uh, into the financial year and the contracts with the suppliers have been aligned as such. We will go back to procuring on a credit uh, basis rather than a cash and carry basis. Therefore, our fungi credit has will increase and the uh, uh, overall working capital will become more, uh, uh, what do you say, more working capital will be released basically from the system. So we will uh, go to a cash conversion cycle of FI23? Yes, it will be better than FI23. This has been done to improve it further. Okay, okay, got it, sir. got it. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhijit from Pi Asset Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, am I audible? Uh, yes, you're audible, sir. You may proceed. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, my question was regarding the expansion and its timeline, which has been answered. So, uh, can you shed some light on how long uh, will it take for optimum utilization? So the optimum utilization of 80% can be achieved by FY27. FY27, okay. And uh, the other question was regarding the fundraise plan, uh, since we are raising funds for uh, growth opportunity plus uh, debt reduction. So um, can we expect a debt reduction in FY25 uh, by the end of FY25? It, it depends on uh, uh, the fund rate, right? Whether the debt will reduce or not. All right. That is it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sanchit Nalan from Nalan Family Office. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, just a follow up. Uh, what is our uh, capacity utilization guidance in terms of tonnage uh, in pity uh, standalone going forward in FI26 and 27? So for FI25, uh, we are doing 48,000 as our target. For FI26, it will be about 54. And then the peak utilization of 58 in 27. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one if you wish to ask questions. As there are no further questions, ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the end of the question and answer session. And on behalf of Pitti Engineering, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining the call. For further queries or visiting the plant, please be in touch with Rama Naidu from Intellect PR on 9920209623. Thank you for joining us and have a wonderful day.